Well, hello Scrappers, Mike here, welcome back to my channel. And today, today is the day so many of you have been breathlessly waiting for. Today we're going to try and recover some tin from some waste, okay? A lot of you are interested in doing that, and I have been doing a lot of R&D behind the scenes and having a lot of failures, but I think I have a method here. I've done this on a small scale and it's worked. We're going to try it on a larger scale. It could be epic or it could be a disaster. We'll find out. We'll find out together. Now, back about four months ago, I promised you that I was working on ways to recover tin from my wastes. And a lot of you just jumped in with the comments and said, Yes, yes, please, please, I need to know how to do that. Tin is too valuable to throw away. Show me, show me, show me. And, well, my early experiments went great. And then later on, I had a lot of trouble re repeating them. I couldn't come up with something repeatable. I still can't repeatably get tin out of chloride solutions, okay? Where you've got a lot of stannous chloride. I'm still working on that, okay? Still having a lot of trouble with that. But, if you happen to have a lot of metastanic acid waste laying around, which is what this blue-gray stuff in here, in these filters is, I think I have a way to get it out convert the metastatic acid back to tin. So that's what we're going to work on today. Um, the chloride reaction, that's, that's a little different. Uh, going from stannous to stannic with tin is very difficult. That's a tough nut to crack. Once you've got stannic tin, that's fairly easy to reduce back to tin. But the stannous tin, not so much. And I'm referring to different oxidation states of tin. Stannic versus stannous. A little basic chemistry there. I won't bore you too much with it. I'll just keep working in the background on figuring out a way to get the uh, the, the, the chloride or the stannic tin out of out, back out of solution. But what we're going to do today is we're going to try and reduce this uh, metastannic acid in here back to tin. And you know you get metastannic acid whenever you dissolve tin in nitric acid. And sometimes it's a byproduct, like you're dissolving um, bronze pins or solder plated pins in nitric acid to recover the gold plating on them and you'll wind up producing a lot of this infamous they call it gray goo the infamous gray goo although my gray goo is colored blue with copper contamination it's insoluble um, it'll trap a lot of your gold underneath the layer of it. it it's really hard to deal with and it's full of tin so we want to get the tin back First thing I want to do is I want to know how much material I've got here. Now there are a couple of filters in here which is going to skew the measurement a little bit, but uh, we'll do it anyway. Those filters are falling apart because they're old and they've been exposed to chemicals. So let me tear the balance, or let me tear the scale with an identical beaker. So 1.7 ounces or 50 grams of material here we're going to try and recover the tin from. I'm going to put this in a crucible. Get it all in without spilling it onto the desktop here. Without breaking my beaker. Everybody in. Nobody stays behind. Okay that in there. So what I propose to do now that I've got this in a crucible is I'm going to add some soda ash to it and I'm going to put it in my foundry furnace. My brand new foundry furnace which I just built and I have a video on the construction and testing of it. I'll put a link in the upper right if you're interested in seeing how I built the foundry furnace. And uh, we'll put it in there and we'll melt it down and then we'll pour the contents of the crucible over into my cone mold here and hopefully we'll get a little prill of tin down at the bottom of the cone mold when it, everything hardens up and we dump it out. And we should have prill of metal at the bottom and slag floating on top. So that's the plan. Let me get some uh, soda ash or sodium carbonate in here. I'm not going to fill the the crucible up more than about half full because I don't want to have a boil over in my brand new foundry furnace. I 
plenty of boil overs in the old one, but I don't want to break in the new one with a bad boil over. So, what should happen here is the sodium carbonate should react with the metastatic acid in there. We should produce sodium nitrate and free tin. At least if I understand the chemistry, that's what's happening. So like I said, I've done this on a small scale in a small little uh, ceramic crucible over a torch and I got tin out of it, okay? So we'll see what happens on a larger scale and see how much tin we can get it out of this. So let's head over to the foundry furnace get this inside and get the furnace lit. Get this done before it gets up to 100 degrees today. It'll be too hot to run in the furnace then. Yep, there's the brand new foundry furnace. Probably took me less than an hour to build. It took a, about a day to dry out after I saturated the fiber with uh, sodium silicate solution to rigidize it, but uh, I broke it in by melting down some of my cement copper and it worked great. Got up to the temperature of copper melting, which we shouldn't have to get anywhere near that high today. So this should work great. So let me get it lit. melt down without boiling over. Sodium carbonate tends to bubble a lot as it melts down. So it releases trapped water and carbon dioxide. But I didn't fill the beaker or I didn't fill the, um, the, the crucible up more than half full so hopefully it will stay in the crucible and not boil over. And uh, once it's all melted I'll stir it with a uh, iron rod. Make sure everything's good and mixed up in there and has a chance to react. Then we'll pour it in the cone mold over there, and once it cools, we'll see what we've got. Hopefully, there'll be some tin in the bottom of the cone mold. I guess we'll find out. So we just gotta wait for it to warm up now. All right, I'm an idiot. I was in such a hurry to get this started before it got too hot, I forgot one crucial ingredient. I need to put a little bit of sand or silica dioxide in there. Yeah, the sodium carbonate's already starting to melt. It's only, only been a couple of minutes. So the reason I'm putting the sand in there is is so that the, the sodium carbonate will tend to leach silica out of my crucible if there's none in there. So I just added some some fine sand to uh, provide a source of silica so it doesn't eat through my crucible. So that's the purpose of that. Okay, so it's got to continue heating up, but I can see that the uh, sodium carbonate or soda ash is already starting to melt in there. I'll try to give you a close-up look at what's going on in there. I hope, I hope that's showing up. See that bubbling going on over there in the corner of the crucible? Yeah, stuff's starting to melt and degas. So it's coming along. Gotta let it keep heating up. Yeah, things are starting to melt down there. Hope that's showing up. Alright, I gotta back off. It's too hot. Okay, I don't know if it's showing up. But there's some shiny stuff in there. I think those are balls of tin that have been reduced from the metastatic acid. So I think it's working. Oh, but I gotta back off. It's too freaking hot. Wow. So yeah, I think it's working. Uh, once it looks like everything in there is molten, I'll give it a good stir with an iron rod. Make sure everything's mixed up good. And uh, hopefully that slag will get good and fluid and all of the, uh, the tin metal will be able to consolidate into one bead in the bottom of the cone mold when I pour it out. We'll see. We're getting to where everything's looking pretty molten. And there's a lot of... Let me take another look here. I don't know if it's showing up. See that stuff? I think that's tin. I really think that's tin floating on top there. See a 
I've had my iron rod in here for a little while to preheat it. So everything doesn't freeze out on it when I stir. Yeah, that slag's pretty, uh, pretty low viscosity. Alright. I think we're about ready to pour. Maybe we'll get some tin out of this. That'd be nice. Okay, who wants to be branded? Step forward. Alright, I'm preheating the cone mold so we don't have a steam explosion when I pour this hot stuff in it. The slightest trace of moisture in there will cause a steam explosion when you pour hot metal or hot slag in a cone mold. Uh, or any kind of mold, actually. So you always have to be careful about that preheated so you burn off any kind of moisture. Um, and then we'll be just about ready to pour, I think. Okay, this bowl's plenty hot. Pull that off. Let me uh, spritz it with a little WD-40. That'll form a layer of carbon in there to prevent things from sticking to the mold, hopefully. Let's turn the heat off here. Well, this is for all the marbles. Okay. I'll give that a minute or two to cool down and harden. Then I'll put it in front of my big shop van, shop fan, and we will uh, get it cooled down to where we can dump it out and see what we got. Hopefully, there's a little button of tin in there. Here's my cone mold cooling down in front of the big fan. I think I'm going to have some lunch while I'm waiting for it to get down cool enough to handle. I got some more of my cement copper drying out in this bucket next to it. That last video where I broke in the, uh, the furnace, I melted down some cement copper. I'm going to do some more in the future, so stay tuned for those videos when they come out. Anyway, I'm going to have some lunch. Okay. Turn this fan off, and we'll uh, see what we got here. There, look at that. Look at that. We got a pearl of metal there. All right. Let's take that over the bench and weigh that up. Take a close look at the slag, too. Okay, let's see what we've got here. I knocked most of the slag off of the prill. Let's see how much tin we've got here. 8.63 grams of tin. From, what was it, right at 50 grams of uh, metastatic acid, but there was some paper mixed in with that too. And um, maybe a little bit of tin right here in the slag. Not much. I mean, the slag looks pretty clear for the most part. I don't see any balls of metal in it. There's one little bit here that might have splattered up on the side of the cone mold when I first started pouring it. And it uh, got incorporated in the slag, because this is one of the flat faces that was against the cone mold. And I'm handling this stuff with gloves because it's very caustic. Um, the uh, sodium carbonate has basically converted into, at least partially, into sodium hydroxide, basically lye at the temperatures we were operating at and uh, it's very caustic it's actually starting to absorb moisture out of the air and get gooey as it will but hey it worked we got some tin recovered from a waste product metastatic acid 
So in the future, you know, if I create metastatic acid accidentally, I know I can get the tin out of it, or I don't have to worry about not creating metastatic acid so much. You know, I can dissolve those bronze pins in, in nitric acid or poor man's nitric, and uh, I can recover tin from the resulting metastatic acid easy enough. I mean, that didn't take very long at all, and it was super simple. And, uh, you know, get enough of this stuff together, can melt it down and make a big ingot of it. Take it to the scrapyard or sell it online, whatever. So, uh, yeah, tin recovery. It's coming along. I just got to figure out how to do it with the Stannis tin now, since I've got a way to do it with the Stannic tin. All right? Well, I hope you found this video interesting, educational, informative, inspirational, whatever. Give it a like, give it a thumbs up. And subscribe to see my future videos. Check out my second channel, ElectroGeek64. Interesting stuff going on there if you're at all interested in electronics or retro computing. And I will see you in the next video. Where, who knows, maybe we'll have other tin recovery methods ready to go. See you then. Bye.